Um, well, now we have still 10 minutes, so uh, if I can ask the panelists to come onto the stage, and we have time for a few questions. So, um, so any any questions comments usually we ask questions yes please um here we have the i don't know if we need it because it is a, not such a big crowd yes do it in english right yes <laughs> um, so the question will be for all three of you I've been dealing with the concept of racism, and one of the things that I've looked into, can you hear me? Is this yeah, yeah, now it's okay, good. I've been dealing, thank you for the presentation, it was really good. My, I really want to be effective, something which has this character. When I've been dealing with the concept of racism, I looked into, and there's a difference between ethnocentrism and racism. The belief that we are better than others, and we're superior to them, and the ethnocentric belief that we just need to stick together to some ethnic group and that's where we'll belong to and that's good for us, but it doesn't make us better than others. Now, what I want to ask you, if you can see in terms of framing, in terms of cartoons, in terms of you know, <coughs> diplomatic ideas or working in the, at the, you know, at the grassroots, if you see those differences, if you see those people recognize it because if you have people who unite together as a group against Israel, they share something together, so they have some basis to this. It's not just universal. So I'm just going to start. Thank you. Okay. Does this one work? Does it work? Yeah. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, yes. It takes it a minute. Okay. So one of the things I prepared for a different lecture, which I was preparing today, is the <coughs> international coverage of the last two weeks with the Ethiopian events. And you kind of stepped right into it. Because I'm fascinated, and again, as I say, I step back for a moment before I understand what it means. I wanted to see, was there a difference in the way that we were covering it here, in the way it's being covered, framed, worldwide? And I actually, today, worked on this. And I want to give three quotes. One was from Reuters, one was from AP, and one was from an Israeli. Because basically, a lot of what went on in Israel, and I'm giving you a short version of that, is that this is racism, it's like Baltimore. Okay, I'm giving it as a general framing, in the sense that this is about, there's a problem, there's a problem with race, it needs to be addressed, and it's similar to what we're seeing now in the United States. And all of the international framing that I've read until now, and I'm, I'm following it as a subject on all of the ones that I always follow, and I haven't seen it in cartoons yet, so I don't know yet how it goes into there, because I follow cartoons all the time, it's part of it, is that it's followed as the Israelis say it's like Baltimore, but, or, okay, then there's a whole long about the but. Um, the biggest, the main framing was usually when you see Israelis, beating or hitting other Israelis. That's the beginning of the sentence. Then it's the West Bank or Gaza. And in this case, and I, I'm not kidding, okay, I've read this now in the Washington Post, the New York Times, I mean, I've been reading all these articles. It's about Jew against Jew. And I'm still out on what this means. I mean, obviously, it bites directly into what we're talking about here because it's about the framing, it's about a difference in framing, and this whole aspect of what's happening right now with the Ethiopian Jews is bringing up all of the hard points. It's both bringing it up as being racist but different, because in Israel there's this conflict, and that it's Jew against Jew. So that our, I'm, excuse me, because it sounds so terrible when I put it now into words, which is probably why I haven't yet until now. Our racism is different. I'm like, really? That's, cause, and, and, and that's the way it's being brought on and in, is that the Israeli racism is also different. That's the way it's being framed right now, which I find very, I'm absolutely disturbed by the fact that we have racism. I'm not surprised, I may be disturbed, but I'm even more disturbed by the fact that even our racism is framed as being different. Because racism of Jew against Jew, that's really bad. That's like, you know. 
I'll, perhaps I'll tap into what uh, Miri has uh, wisely said. I think the uh, main difference between the, uh, well, I'll say that the, con the different conclusions from the Holocaust and World War II, in Europe the conclusion was nationalism is bad because nationalism brings fascism, even Nazism, etc. For the Jewish people, the conclusion was nationalism is necessary because if we were organized as a nation, this would not have happened. And that is leading to completely two different mindsets nationally. I uh, remember, for example, uh, from when being in Norway, for example, the attitude towards the rest of the world envisioned in the United Nations. Norway is the uh, biggest donor to the United Nations per capita uh, and number three in absolute terms after the United States and Japan. Uh, in a way, the United Nations uh, embodies the world order as it should be in more or less European eyes. In Israel, um shmum. You know, uh, Abba Eben uh, once said that uh, the UN is the flat earth society because if Tunisia would bring a resolution saying that the earth is flat and Israel is to be blamed for flattening it, it would probably pass with 104, 30 abstains, two against. So there is a uh, basic contempt, I would say, or, uh, or, um, or a big suspicion at least towards uh, uh, international organization. That creates the feeling outside that Israel, why are you so distant? Why do you think you're better or you know better than the UN or all of us here together? Uh, but on the other topic that you mentioned of being different uh, as sort of racism, why is it that along the generations, Jews have uh, suffered uh, in Europe? The, the answer is because they integrated, but they never assimilated. They were always different. When Europe faced the question, can we tolerate a nation that is different, a nation that insists on being different and on the dignity of being different, the answer was no. At the beginning, it was religious reasons. Then when Europe became scientific, it became Darwinistic, um, uh, racist uh, reasons. And today, when it's no longer politically correct to hate a nation for their religion or for their race, today, they are hated for their state, if I may put it in a very blunt way. It's the same hate, different reasons. Now, the thing is, I as a Christian in the Middle East, I look at our attempt to remove the hatred towards us. What did we do? We did something similar to what the Jews did at the beginning of the 20th century. We wanted to say, we are different, so how do we deal with the difference? We actually say, well, we're actually not different. We're not Christians and Muslims, we're all Arabs. The Arab nationalism idea is a way to become part of the majority. And today, we see that this order is collapsing, Arab nationalism is completely breaking down, and we're back finding ourselves in this minority that needs protection, no longer as part of the majority of those who take the decisions or it's legitimate to have an Iraqi foreign minister who's Christian like before, or in Syria, prime minister, etc. Today, we're being pushed away. So I think this is the question that we have to face. Yes, we are different. It's not about, it's very easy to go to the lowest common ground and say, oh, but we're all humans, you know. Uh, eh, imagine by John Lennon, imagine no countries, no religions, etc. We're all exactly human. But at the end of the day, we are different. The only way to create true compassion and coexistence and tolerance is not by denying our difference, saying, oh, we're all Arabs, or all oh, we're all Europeans, or we're not Jews, we are German sons of that uh, Moshev Israel, the, the religion of Moses. But we are different, and it's time to accept this difference as a source of strength rather, as a, rather than a source of weakness. Thank you. Thank you. I, I want to give you a short example. After the assassinations of the Charlie Hebdo, a uh, cartoonist and also editorialist, and four of them were good friends of mine, because I speak French, I read a new magazine when I travel to Paris, and after the, the hyper cachère, also uh, assassinations, I took a taxi in Jerusalem, it was late in the night, I had, I had a lecture somehow in the Matnas, and in a community center, and the taxi who, who came at almost midnight to take me home, asked me, what are you talking about? I said, I'm a cartoonist. I was talking about Charlie Hebdo. The driver was an Arab. I identify his accent. Okay, it's easy as a, as a, I live in Jerusalem for 41 years. 
So I know when I go in a taxi, if he's an Arab or not, it's very easy. I have no problem with that at all. And he says, you know, if you ask me, I think that they went too far. They should not have do those cartoons of Muhammad. This is forbidden by Muslim law. And I say, okay. But let, and, he, and, he, and he tell me, try to imagine this situation, that someone is drawing a cartoon of a naked woman with the Torah in her hand, uh, dancing in a synagogue. What would you, how would you react? I say, I would be angry, but I will not assassinate the cartoonist. And then he, he pushed on the brakes, looked at me and said, Wallach, I never thought about that. You are right. This is the whole difference. <laughs> Knowing each other and respecting each other. Thank you. Um, actually, it's 8 o'clock, so I think uh, we can all please join me in thanking our panel. I think it was a fascinating evening. Thank you very much. And thank you again. Congratulations to Abe. Thank you for coming. Good night. Thank you.